Welcome to the Azure Databricks to Microsoft Purview Lineage Solution Accelerator Overview video. In this brief video, we are going to be navigating Microsoft Purview and observing the results of having extracted Lineage from Azure Databricks. Assuming you've already gone through the deployment steps, you have your function configured, your Databricks cluster configured, you're ready to go. If you did the demo deployment, you'll see a very similar notebook in my example. Uh, for those of you who did not do the demo deployment and are just exploring this, we have one uh, Databricks notebook that is just pulling in data from blob storage, copying it, doing a small transformation, and then landing it also in blob storage. As a very simple example, please see the GitHub repo for the full list of data sources we support. In any case, I ran the same notebook in three different ways. Once on an interactive cluster, just manually. Second, I ran it through a Databricks job. And then finally, I ran it through Azure Data Factory to demonstrate how that might look as well. So starting off, I've gone to the Browse Assets screen, and I, you can see that I have one Azure Databricks item as a built-in type, and then one or three custom source types of a Purview custom connector. First and foremost, the Azure Databricks built-in types are, are built in, supported by the, the platform. The Purview custom connector is supported by the Solution Accelerator. So the custom connector type is going to represent placeholder assets. If you have already scanned your data estate, such as your, your data lakes, your SQL databases, your Synapse data warehouse, then the solution accelerator is intelligent enough to query purview, then to link and associate your Databricks jobs to those scanned assets. If you have not scanned, then you will, we will create a, a custom connector asset, and then it will be a placeholder. When you do scan your asset and you finally have it in place, then the next time your Databricks job runs, it will find that, hey, I have a placeholder, but I actually have this asset ready to go. It has already been scanned and it will update the lineage of that asset to point to the correct scanned asset. So that's a brief aside on the custom connector. So again, I encourage you to strongly encourage you to scan uh, your, asset, your data states and then, and then you'll have the best experience here. Coming from the demo, we won't have anything pre-scanned, so that's how we have it here. Next, we have Azure Databricks itself. We can click into Azure Databricks, and it begins a faceted navigation, where first we'll be able to see all of the workspaces that we have available, all the workspaces we have either scanned or we have connected to for lineage purposes. I can click into it, and then at the top level, I will see all of the main items, such as jobs, notebooks, if I were to have ran a JAR job or a Python uh, job, I would see those as well here. So these are all of the assets that I have successfully extracted lineage from. So again, I'm going to click through to the Azure Databricks notebook and I will be able to see in here, the first off the friendly name of this from what's the actual name of the notebook. I can drill into the properties. I can see what cluster this was ran on. I can see, again, the fully qualified name, so that includes the file path in the Databricks workspace as well. So I can see for the last run of this, this was in the shared folder and at this notebook name. I can see which Spark version, I can see which user ran that as well from, from the interactive notebook. We'll talk a little bit more about the related assets, but uh, note that we can have some detailed lineage inside of here as well. So if I click into the lineage, I'll be able to see that these were the inputs, this was the output. Again, if I had scanned my data lake in advance, when I ran this notebook, it would have picked up the correct blob file system or, or WASB storage path, and then associate it with that particular scanned asset. In this case, I, I haven't done any scanning in purview, so it does the placeholder instead. If I click down into properties again, I can go back to processes, and I can see at a finer grain detail. So inside the process, I can actually see, for example, the Spark plan that was used to create this. So if I wanted to get really into the details, I would be able to take this JSON out and examine it to see what else is happening inside of here. Now that we've looked at the notebook, we can also then go back to the related tab and we can walk our way back up to the workspace or we can see other jobs that are actually using this notebook. That was also visible here in the Properties tab, 
but it's much cleaner in the related tab as well. So I can actually see, since I ran this as a job inside of Databricks as well, I can click through to my sample job, and it's going to look pretty much the same. And now I just have a Databricks workspace, I have a Databricks job, and then I have a notebook task underneath there. So I can click into my sample job, and now I can go into lineage, and we're going to see much, very much the same stuff because this is ultimately the same notebook, but this is on a notebook task for the my sample job. And so we can again go into properties. We can see which, which cluster this was ran on. We can read which job this was last ran, the notebook path, the qualified name of it, again, Spark version as well. And then we can click through to, again, the, the notebook itself that was ran. And we're, we're back to where we were before. So we can navigate from a given job through all of the different tasks that were there. And then we can, so these are all the tasks that were associated with that job. And then we can drill into further the notebooks that were actually being ran. And all the way through, we're able to see lineage of those individual tasks that represent both uh, the, the notebook as well as the processes underneath it. So now that we have our notebook, uh, notebook, our job, the last one to look at is then the data factory notebook. So in this case, my I call it a data factory pipeline, and it executed a notebook task inside of Databricks. So I can click on to here, and we'll see much the same information here. So we'll click on properties, and I can see here are the parameters that I passed from, from Azure Data Factory. Here's again that cluster ID, the job ID, notebook path, qualified name, the Spark version. And again, I can navigate to that notebook we were using, or I can click through to this process, and I can see some more details about that logical plan that was being used as well. So great, and then again, of course, I can see lineage at this, this level as well. So uh, it does not show, however, specifically from the, the data factory uh, pipeline, right? It, it shows only at this time the Databricks notebook task. Uh, it does not show which data factory pipeline necessarily called it. Uh, that is outside of the scope of the solution accelerator. So with that, that is navigating the Azure Databricks types uh, as a result of the Solution Accelerator for Azure Databricks to Microsoft Purview Lineage. Thank you very much for using the Solution Accelerator. We look forward to any comments or questions on the GitHub repo.